gave a keynote this morning, and one of the things that I really liked in there was this um, analytics value escalator. Can you t unpack that a little bit and talk about what those different components were in that escalator? Sure. Well, at FusionX, what we see is that there are different stages in analytics. And the first stage is really what we call descriptive analytics. Uh, it's really a phase where we try to understand what happened historically. So you take a look at historical data as in what happened in terms of sales, um, how, did, how was your sales, how was your revenue, how were your profits, and, and so on and so forth, or were, were there any issues such as downtime or breakdowns and so on and so forth. So that's descriptive analytics. But as we move towards the, the right, and as we progress, you then want to understand why did it happen. So that's diagnostic analytics to understand based on an event why did it happen. Um, so why was historical there? then diagnostic. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you want to understand why was there a dip in sales? Why was there uh, an increase in revenue? Why did a downtime or a breakdown really happen? Why did a disaster happen? So that's really diagnostic analytics. And then beyond that, we want to understand that based on historical data, the signs and the learnings that we've had how could we predict um, the future? How could we predict when would the next downtime happen? How could we predict um, when and how we're going to make things better? And then um, the next step is really to use prescriptive analytics, which is making recommendations and actionable items to say that how can we avoid that downtime happening again? How can we make our sales and, uh, and how can we retain our customers? So that whole spectrum really completes the analytics. Um, in, in terms of the four stages. So that was starting out with the first one mm -hmm. being historical, mm -hmm. then diagnostic. And then predictive. Predictive and then prescriptive. prescriptive. Okay. That's right, yeah. And when you pull all those together, that gives you a better use of your data or is it a better uh, business insight? or? Exactly. So what it does is, instead of just having raw data, which is more of a liability, you're now making it an asset to have past learnings but using that to not just derive insights, but also derive foresight. So that's really nirvana, and that's really the holy grail. Uh, people want, people in organizations want to make better and more well-informed decisions. They want to know what happened in the past. For example, if you've seen a downtime, what were some of the symptoms before that downtime happened? If there was a tsunami as an event, what were some of the signs? Perhaps there were tremors and things like that. Even for a hard disk, if it failed, if it crashed, was there a certain symptom such as defragmentation or bad sectors, so that when we see similar symptoms reoccurring, then you know and you could predict that the next downtime could happen, and then you could recommend actionable items to avoid such situations from happening. So that's really what analytics is all about, is to have that insight, and more importantly, have that foresight to make better decisions. So you guys talk about advanced analytics, right? That's, that's, right. that's one of the things you guys are uh, known for? Is exactly. that correct? And that's so our specialty. How is advanced different than just regular analytics? Yeah, so regular analytics and business intelligence was really more about understanding the what and the why. And um, with advanced analytics, you're able to derive the full spectrum of foresight, forward thinking, as you move uh, to create much better value for our clients. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, so if, if you're looking at um, uh, the newest craze everyone's talking about is the Internet of Things, IoT. So will this sort of predictive analytics work in that world when the devices may be new and just connecting to different things around them? Absolutely. Um, that's a very good point because um, the machine-to-machine -machine communication would just be in relation to sensors. So you have temperature sensors, you have humidity sensors, you have pressure sensors, you can read input and output, you can read read writes and machine hours and so on and so forth. But think about this. If machines and if sensors are just generating data, but if there's no insight to say what does this mean? What story does it tell? So for example, if you're seeing that um, an increase in temperature could result in a certain disaster such as an explosion in a factory plant, it would be very important to know that certain signs and symptoms could lead to this, and very importantly, what are the actionable items. So data generation and data growth is happening as we speak. The challenge is it's growing and it's outpacing our ability to analyze it. So with FusionX software and working alongside with the partner ecosystems that we have, 
we will be able to ingest that data to find that patterns and signs, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in DNA, whether it's in manufacturing. Transportation. Transportation, yeah, yeah. to optimize things, to say that, okay, weather forecast is saying that it's going to be raining here tomorrow, so perhaps you need more taxis to be diverted to this place. It shows that in a factory plant that if it's consistently 18 degrees, but all of a sudden it's moving to 19 degrees, 20 degrees, 21 degrees, that's abnormal. And what do we need to do about it? We can't wait for a month to take action. It could cause a breakdown, it could cause an explosion, it could be very hazardous and it could be very bad for safety and security. So that everything in our lives today centers around some form of data and it's how we make lives better, smarter, more agile, safer and, and really a much smarter planet. So, d in, so in that smarter planet, does Fusion X have a role there? I mean, what, what is your play with developers and data scientists? I mean, what can they get from you folks to help manage this growing area of Internet of Things, smarter cities, insights into your behaviors, all those sort of things? How do you, what do you guys offer? Yeah, so we live in a really exciting world. There's, there's a plethora yeah. of different data sources, and there's a slew of good partners in this ecosystem that we work together with, infrastructure partners, Hadoop players, and uh, operating systems, and so on and so forth. But what businesses and people and civilians want today is really you know, something that is humanized so that anything that happens in their daily lives, whether they're running an organization, whether it's a retail outlet, whether it's uh, in relation to safety, security, transportation, whether it's inflation, people just want to be able to use simple software, simple applications to process that very quickly so that they can make much better decisions. So what we as FusionX do is we provide software and solutions that help make people's lives better to make the transportation more efficient, to avoid bottlenecks uh, for healthcare. How do we understand uh, whether the rooms or the, or the wards are, are full? How do we know whether we're optimizing the equipment usage uh, instead of having long queues? How do we optimize that and how do we make sure that people don't um, get into a situation where they suffer more and have too much wait time? And that's our role and we're really excited to be in this space. And, and so the, the, I think the minister from uh, Singapore was here today and That's right. kind of put out a call for everyone to, to build great apps around Singapore's open data. Mm -hmm. Is that also an important ingredient here is that the open data sets that you can then use a tool like FusionX or the platform mm -hmm. yes. to build things from? Is that something exactly. you guys are going to be involved with as well? Or? Exactly. I think the, um, the government is obviously very supportive, it's very open and it's the same for the regional folks as well. I think. Um, open data, big data, is, is really something that uh, transparency and, and, and the promotion of this is very important, whether it's in relation to tourism, inflationary patterns, consumer price index. You can have all this in an open data form. You can see what are the last transacted prices for maybe housing, maybe for medical expenses and so on and so forth. So with this, we will be able to work together with many parties to see how we can make things better. So for example, understand whether a, cer a certain introduction of certain taxations, does it affect inflationary patterns? Does it affect the buying power of, of, the, of, the, of the population? And of course, we want to see what happens in this housing, education, transportation, safety, and really optimizing the way to make again the world a smarter place so but th it doesn't have to be big data does it it just has to is it's data but does it have to be big to be good exactly or? so big data itself is sometimes uh, a word that is a buzzword that sometimes gets overly confusing or overwhelming yeah. for us it's all about any data Right, so it doesn't matter where this big data, medium-sized data, small data, important data, exactly, exactly. And, and sometimes the data is internal. Sometimes the data is external. Maybe you have social media, you have ATM machines, IP, TV, e-commerce. There's lots of data that's being generated as we speak, um, but not so much the size of the data because there's the velocity of the data. There's a variety and complex data. Maybe you have uh, GPS data. Maybe you have location-based services. Maybe you have again IP, TV, and e-commerce. So there's uh, a different type of variety of data. But how do we find that data because it's growing at such an exponential pace? And if you take a look at the statistics, probably only a single percent of the data in this world is actually analyzed. We generate data as we speak. Uh, we go online, we check our e-commerce, we check our emails, but how many of us really monitor and analyze the data in a hospital, in a transportation ministry, in a taxi company, in a manufacturing plant? 
how do we find that science to say that, wow, there could potentially be room for improvement? There could potentially be a disaster over here that we need to avoid. Uh, for education, how do we identify the right talent so that we can do the right things? So I think there's huge potential in this space and, uh, and we see that as a really exciting space for us to be in. So Ivan, if we fast forward to next year at Singapore, the first week in December, what would you like to see change with Fusion, Fusion X and what would you like to see change in the industry in that 12 month period? Yeah, I, I wish I had a crystal ball for that, but yeah, I, yeah. but yeah, we are very forward thinking, and we believe that the whole region, the whole world, uh, leaders and, and and visionaries are very forward thinking in terms of how we use data. People understand that data is the new crude oil, whether it's on the internet. There is a convergence in the data world, which is the online world, and also the physical world. Whether you're a retail outlet uh, with a physical store, or you have an online presence on e-commerce whether you are a hotel, that you have a walk-in uh, mechanism, or you have an online booking engine, or you have a, a resource sharing mechanism. There's so many things that are happening. Innovation is really exploding. So we think that um, we would like to see the society, we would like to see the ecosystem really participate in this much more. It's happening as we speak, but we'd like to see more involvement where people are using a data-driven approach. So let's not be afraid to try something out in an experimental mode that could fail, but we learn from that experience and make it better. We can fine tune it. It's an experimental thing, but if it works and if it's successful, then we can replicate it much, much more. So whether it's in Singapore, uh, Southeast Asia, whether it's in Thailand, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, Hong Kong, or in Europe, or in San the United States or anywhere, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter whether it's San Francisco, Boston, the Valley, or, or in London, or in, 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 in any of these countries. We would think that it's a lot of innovation that's happening, and we're really excited about this. We want to participate with multiple stakeholders, uh, with the people, with the consumers, with the organizations, and I think this is set to take off and accelerate. Excellent. Ivan, we look forward to that conversation next year. Thanks. Thanks.